Welcome to Paul Isley's Plant Education 101 from Rainforest Floor Incorporated in Torrance, California. We're here today with Paul Isley of Rainforest Floor Incorporated. He's going to give us some help about how to take care of tillandsias, these wonderful air plants that his nursery grows. Hello, Paul. Hello, Barry, and welcome, everybody. So, throughout the year, the light requirements for these plants, where would we put the plants in terms of the brightness of light, direct sun, shade? I know it depends on the species, but in general. Well, not only which species, but it also depends on where you live because direct sun in Tucson, Arizona is very different than Lake Oswego, Oregon. So you have to use a little bit of common sense. How is your location compared to other peoples in other areas of the world? Um, one interesting factoid is that with higher humidity, the plants will do well with brighter light. Uh, you can give them more light with higher humidity. That's true for all the bromeliads. And so based on your own conditions, um, they, will, they will thrive with bright light. Uh, when you get into direct sun, then it kind of depends on the level of humidity, the temperature, the intensity of the sunlight, and all of that. Um, a lot of these plants will grow fine in full sun in the tropics. They will not grow in full sun in Tucson, Arizona. So you have to figure out where you are. But in general, uh, the plants do like lots of light. The, uh, the white fuzz that's on the leaves of many of these uh, reflects up to 75% of the light that impinges on the leaf. You know, they grow in full sun in Latin America where it's humid and it gets very hot and they do fine, but it's the white fuzz that reflects most of the light. So if you contrast that with a species like Bulbosa that doesn't have the white fuzz, then this is a species that comes from a much lower light area in a jungle, uh, on a river bank, uh, doesn't get as much light so that the green leaf here is a lot like white skin. Uh, people who have white skin have to be careful of the sun. People who have dark skin uh, don't have to be so careful. In this case it's having the white fuzz. They're called trichomes. We use the word trichomes a lot. They're little tiny scales like a paper towel that's on the leaf and every time it gets wet it sucks the, the water in like through capillary action like a paper towel and it goes down into the leaf. So they have those two functions of reflecting extra light and sucking in the water. I know we talked about it before, but the life cycle of these plants, uh, once somebody buys the plant and it blooms, it eventually has offsets, correct? Yes, it does. I don't have any right here in front of me, but uh, you know, on our website, rainforestflora.com, you'll see there are many, many clumps of plants. Uh, they reproduce vegetatively after they flower. Thank you, Barry. Um, this is Tillandsia dura. Produces a beautiful bright red inflorescence with a little bit of Spanish moss on it. Uh, this is El Finito, the thin form. But um, yeah, this started from one plant. Now there are about 30 or 40 plants on it and this is what they all do. Some will offset, like Tillandsia berigeri, will offset all year round. Most of them offset uh, just before, during, and after they bloom and they'll produce anywhere from one or two to a dozen offsets that will then grow up over the next year, sometimes two years, and then they will bloom and then they will put out more offsets. And so you can get really beautiful clumps growing in just a few years. Um, I have an interesting anecdote to tell you. A number of years ago, we had a guy come over to the nursery. He was 85 years old and he had a big black plastic trash bag with seven balls of a Tillandsia, and each ball was about three times bigger than this. And he had started those balls from one plant 40 years before. And he was passing them on to us. Uh, he was 85 years old, he lived for another couple of years, a uh, wonderful man. And so now we have those clumps here hanging at the nursery. I don't know of other plants that you can do this with, really, you know, that you can have something. Uh, this, is, this is called Bergery Colescent Form. This is a larger clump. Uh, this is a little larger than, he had the, the regular form of berigree. This one actually is coalescent, that means it grows on a stem. Uh, it's whiter and fuzzier and the individual plants get bigger. And this, is a, this is a special plant called berigree coalescent form. But the idea is the same. Um, you start with one plant, over time you get them hanging in your patio or your trees or wherever you want to put them. And uh, you start getting these living mobiles that just sit there and grow and get these beautiful blooms. And, and I'm sure none of you like hummingbirds out there and you have to just put up with hummingbirds when they bloom. 
But when these plants bloom, hummingbirds love these things and they're just all over them. I understand that uh, many people who have bromeliads eventually join a bromeliad society or a bromeliad club. I know, I know you support the clubs by letting them have their shows in your facility. And once they grow plants, they often sell them to other collectors. Is that correct? That's one of the aspects that's really nice of the bromeliad societies. It's an international organization founded in 1950. Uh, there are a number of affiliates here in the United States and around the world. The Deutsche Bromeliad Gesellschaft in Germany uh, is a German bromeliad society. I was over there last September and gave a talk to their group. And uh, the bromeliad societies uh, are a wonderful way not only for people with like interest to get to know each other and trade plants, but like Barry said, it's a great way to uh, sell extra plants and make a little money. Uh, most of the clubs have competitive shows where the people enter plants. There's an official um, rule book, guide book, judge's handbook, whatever you want to call it, that uh, people go to train for a number of years and become official judges. And we're having, we're actually having a show here this weekend for the South Bay Bromeliad Associates and also the uh, La Bologna Bromeliad Society, uh, La Bologna Valley here in the West LA area. Uh, they're having a big show, they have it once a year, they have it here at the nursery, they have a competitive judge show. Uh, people come and they, they bring plants to sell. Uh, we have a big sale here at the shop, and uh, it's a lot of fun. It's really a lot of fun. You have this marvelous website, www.rainforestflora.com, and you're going live with a brand new version of that quite soon. Yes, we are. It's uh, Part of it's up right now. It's, uh, it's a work in progress. Uh, we're pretty proud of it, uh, the, mostly because of the plants. You know, we've been doing this for 37 years now. <laughs> and uh, to watch the plants grow and to, and to share them with people. I mean, yes, it's a business, and yes, we, we, we try to make money, not maybe all the time or very successfully, but you know, that's part of the object of the game. But it's also to, to when you have a passion for something that you love, and, and you see other people develop that passion, that's just such a huge reward, you know? And, and now with the internet and with YouTube and video like this, uh, it, it's just so great for people to be able to discover something like Planet Talansia, Planet Bromeliad, and people all over the world can share their photos and share their ideas and ask questions of each other, and uh, it's just wonderful. But people should know that you also have written a marvelous book. Yes. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Barry does a great job of directing. Uh, yeah, this is the book Talansia, and um, this was in the first video that we did a few weeks ago, and it, you know, it has a lot of photos of the plants, um, and it also has a lot of, you know, the first chapter in the book is uh, care instructions. Uh, many plants are featured. There's a new chapter on hybrids, which is what we're really proud of. Uh, the hybrids that have been created over the over the last uh, last 20 years. Um, but anyway, yeah, this book has been well received, and it's. Uh, it's available from the nursery here. It's available online at botanical-press.com. And uh, it's, you know, 300 and something pages of information on Talansias. Paul has said there's gonna be a number of series of videos, more about how to raise the plants, how to sell the plants. And uh, you, people are uh, encouraged to come down to the nursery. Paul, what are your hours and where are you located? We're on Hawthorne Boulevard in Torrance, California, very close to LAX. If you ever get to LAX and you got two or three hours, definitely you know take a taxi, come on down. It's uh, it's easy to do. Just make two or three turns. We're oh I don't know three or four miles south and east of LAX, and um, we've got a beautiful place here. We'd love to see you, and um, you know anytime. And the website, like Barry was saying, is uh, is evolving and getting better and better. So there's a lot going on.